In the entirety of manga history, few names shine as brightly as that of Go Nagai, a visionary mangaka whose creative genius has left a grand impact on the world of Japanese comics and entertainment. Born on September 6th, 1945, in Wajima Ishikawa, Japan, Kiyoshi Nagai, who would later adopt the pen name Go Nagai, embarked on a journey that would redefine the boundaries of manga and contribute significantly to the emergence of the medium as a cultural force. Gonagai's formative years were marked by the post-war reconstruction era in Japan, a period of profound societal and cultural change. Raised in a family where traditional values coexisted with the winds of change, young Gonagai displayed an early penchant for artistic expression. His childhood, set against the backdrop of a recovering nation, would shape his artistic sensibilities and lay the foundation for the groundbreaking works that would follow. I was born three weeks after the Japanese capitulation, so I lived the horror of the war only through the testimonies and stories of the people around me. But I was affected for sure, so all my works were. The fear of war is clear in every story of mine, and I'm often misunderstood because I prefer not to express explicitly pacifist messages, but I rather show what would happen if we came to a new world war. I also think that some of the characters I created shares a hippie soul, because I started working just in 1968, so they were inevitably influenced by those years. In these early years, Nagai found solace and inspiration in the visual storytelling of traditional Japanese art, particularly Yukiyoi prints and Kumishi Bai, paper theatre. These art forms, with their vivid depictions of historical tales and supernatural beings, fueled Nagai's imagination and provided a glimpse into the rich storytelling traditions that would later influence his manga narratives. Nagai's exposure to various forms of media during his childhood played a major role in shaping his creative identity. The post-war period in Japan saw the rise of television as a powerful medium, and Nagai, like many of his contemporaries, became enamored with the captivating stories unfolding on the small screen. The impact of popular shows such as the animated Astro Boy and live-action Ultraman left an indelible mark on Nagai, sparking his fascination with the fantastical and otherworldly. Having read and watched many anime in my younger years, my first inspiration was the series Astro Boy from 1963, about a robot in the shape of a young child by our master Osamu Tezuka, and the series Tetsujin 28 Go from 1964, about a remote-controlled robot by our master Mitsutero Yokoyama. Five years later, I decided to work as a professional manga artist. A challenge was to create my own robot stories without imitating these two masters and their creative work. Simultaneously, Nagai immersed himself in the world of manga, devouring the works of Osamu Tezuka, the god of manga himself, and other luminaries of the time. Tezuka's innovative storytelling techniques and the boundary-pushing narratives became a lodestar for Nagai, inspiring him to experiment with unconventional themes and narrative structures in his own work. It's really interesting, Japanese manga has a lot of emotion, taking into account the subtle differences between each panel. There's a lot of feeling which emerges naturally inside one's mind. That's what manga is about, and I can see that people all over the world clearly understand this. Early exposure to the detailed and disturbing wood engravings of prolific 19th century artist Gustave Dore and his interpretations of biblical Christian mythology and the story of the Divine Comedy greatly impacted Nagai in his prominent themes of Christianity and demonic forces. When I was a child, I was struck by the edition of Divine Comedy my father had at home, which was illustrated by Dore. Since then, I've paid attention to Italian culture, mostly novels and movies imported in Japan. Mao Dante and Devilman are for sure children of Lucifer trapped in the ice. The seeds of Nagai's future contributions to the manga landscape were shown during these impressionable years, as he absorbed the diverse influences of traditional art, televised entertainment, and the burgeoning manga industry. The amalgamation of these influences would later manifest in Nagai's distinctive style and thematic exploration, setting him apart as a trailblazer in the world of manga. As Gonagai transitioned into adolescence, his burgeoning artistic talents found an outlet in various creative endeavors. Fascinated by the dynamic and expressive nature of manga, he began honing his skills as an artist, experimenting with different styles and storytelling techniques. His early forays into manga creation were characterized by an innate curiosity and a desire to push the boundaries of conventional narrative. Nagai completed his education at the Metropolitan Itabashi High School of Tokyo. During his gap year spent at a preparatory school to secure admission to Waseda University, he faced a challenging period of illness, lasting three weeks, marked by severe diarrhea. Confronted with a heightened awareness of his mortality, he sought to leave a mark of his existence by revisiting a childhood passion, creating manga. With the belief that his time was limited, he resolved to produce a manga work within what he perceived to be his final months. As Nagai geared up for this endeavor, a visit to the hospital resulted in a diagnosis of catarrh of the colon but he subsequently recovered. This health episode marked a significant turning point in his life. Convinced of his dedication to manga, he discontinued his formal education after three months and embraced the life of a creative ronin. 
Assisted by his brother Yasutaka, he embarked on the creation of his inaugural manga pieces. Despite his mother's oppression to his manga aspirations, he persisted in submitting his works for publication, facing numerous rejections. There are accounts suggesting that when Nagai submitted his creations to publishers, his mother discreetly influenced them to reject his submissions. Nevertheless, Weekly Shonen Sunday took notice of his work and reached out to Shotaro Ishinomori. Through the collaborative efforts of Yasutaka, Nagai produced a trial manga that eventually earned him acceptance into Ishinomori's studio in 1965. I was really surprised when Ishinomori created really long, vertically divided panels. I thought, wow, so you can do it this way. Speech bubbles lying across two panels, and characters drawn over multiple panels. Things like that. Now we're used to it, so we take it for granted, but at the time, it was really astonishing. In the pursuit of his artistic aspirations, Nagai attended the Nihon University College of Art, a decision that would prove instrumental in shaping his creative trajectory. The academic environment exposed him to a wealth of artistic theories and disciplines, providing a foundation upon which he could build his unique artistic voice. However, Nagai's approach to art was marked by a rebellious spirit that resisted conformity, foreshadowing the unconventional path he would later carve into the manga industry. During his university years, Nagai's creative fervor intensified, fueled by a desire to challenge societal norms and explore themes that transcended the conventional boundaries of manga. His early works, including Meikashi Polikichi, a gag manga story of a policeman in the Edo period, and Harenshi Gakuen, Shameless School, showcased his propensity for pushing the envelope and addressing taboo subjects with a blend of jokes and irreverence that set him apart from his contemporaries. In his series Haroenchi Gakuen, Nagai introduced eroticism and the theme of graphic violence to children's manga in Japan, marking a departure from conventional norms and sparking controversy. This pioneering usage of violence and crude humor was met with widespread disapproval across various sectors of Japanese society, raising concerns among many parent-teacher associations PTAs, during this period. I originally started with gag manga, but I incorporated some elements from story manga. At the time, gag manga was divided into equal panels, and you could always see the whole character's body. It was almost like it was taking place on a stage. Back then, there were lots of comics like that, but I think there's a limit to what you can express that way. So even though I was drawing gag manga, I started using large panels like in story manga, using close-ups, things like that. Aburashi Ika, also known as the Aburashi Family, is a manga that emerged in the late 1960s by Go Nagai, contributing to the genre of comedy and Yakuza-themed storytelling. The series unfolds the eccentric adventures of the Abarashi family, a group of comically exaggerated Yakuza members, set against the backdrop of the Abarashi prison in Hokkaido. The narrative blends elements of slapstick humor, absurdity, and the occasional moments of action led by the charismatic and somewhat bumbling Kikunosuke. The family members engage in humorous escapades as they navigate the challenges of both the criminal underworld and their daily lives. Nagai's first delve into the supernatural began with Demon Lord Dante, a manga serialized in 1971. This series, inspired by Dante Alighieri's Inferno, explored themes of morality, sin, and redemption. The narrative unfolded as Ryo Utsugi transforms into the demonic Dante, leading readers through a dark and philosophical journey. Demon Lord Dante exemplified Nagai's penchant for infusing profound themes into fantastical settings, demonstrating his willingness to challenge the conventional boundaries of storytelling as well as his penchant for demonic and fantastical themes. I told myself that it was a good idea to create a hero who wasn't necessarily good, but we could have a bad hero. That's where the inspiration came. At the time, I was watching movies like Godzilla and I was really identifying myself to him. Without knowing why, through the eyes of Godzilla, I felt the need to crush tanks or disperse crowds of people with kicks. I found that entertaining. It's the same state of mind that I started with writing Mao Dante. Kona Gai's artistic evolution reached a watershed moment with the creation of Mazinger Z in 1972. This mecha masterpiece not only marked a milestone in Nagai's career, but also left an indelible impact on the manga and anime landscape. The series introduced the iconic giant robot piloted by heroic Koji Kabuto, becoming a trailblazer in the mecha genre. Mazinger Z not only revolutionized the way giant robots were portrayed, but also pioneered the concept of super robots, setting the stage for a new era in the genre. Nagai's innovative storytelling techniques, characterized by a seamless fusion of science fiction and the supernatural, elevated the series beyond mere robot battles, captivating audiences worldwide. One day, I was driving along the streets of Tokyo in the middle of a traffic jam, where all drivers were sharing a common feeling of anger because they could not move at all. An idea clicked, and I started to imagine that my car generated arms and legs to puzzle the other cars. I returned to my studio and started to draw the designs for the first prototypes of Mazinger. 
the unprecedented success of Mazen Gazi catapulted Go Nagai into the limelight, solidifying his status as a maverick in the manga industry. The innovative approach to storytelling that defined Mazen Gazi was emblematic of Nagai's creative ethos. His narratives were distinguished by complex characters, intricate plots, and a dynamic fusion of genres. Nagai's ability to weave together elements of science fiction and the supernatural resonated with audiences, offering a refreshing departure from the mundane. In embracing and expanding upon the possibilities of storytelling within the manga medium, Nagai not only carved a niche for himself, but also inspired a generation of creators who would further shape the landscape of manga and anime. I think they were surprised at the sense of reality. Even if you create a fictional world, it still needs to be convincing, regardless of how much the story escalates, or how large scale it is. Where there's an eating scene, people need to say, delicious, or a girl needs to squeal and say, that's so embarrassing. It's the accumulation of these emotional experiences that give birth to a convincing reality. Just like in Mazinger Z, you can see the people who are harmed by the robot's activities, and it has amazing impact. Perhaps that part felt very fresh to them. Devilman, a seminal work in the seinen genre, showcased Nagai's ability to blend supernatural elements with profound philosophical themes. The series, which debuted in 1972, marked a watershed moment in Nagai's career as he ventured into uncharted territories of storytelling. Devilman not only presented readers with spine-chilling horror, but also delved into the intricate folds of the human psyche. The narrative unfolded as Akira Fudo, the protagonist, fuses with a demonic entity, becoming the powerful yet conflicted Devilman. Nagai used this metamorphosis as a vehicle to explore the duality of human nature, confronting the darkness within the consequences of unchecked power. The series resonated with audiences challenging conventional moralities and societal norms, earning Nagai acclaim for his ability to craft narratives that transcended the horror genre's typical tropes. As Devilman grappled with existential questions and moral quandaries, Nagai fearlessly confronted complex and controversial subjects, solidifying his reputation as a mangaka willing to push the boundaries of manga storytelling. Go Nagai arguably ventured into even darker territories with the creation of Violence Jack. In the mid-1970s, departing from the fantastical realms of his earlier works, this post-apocalyptic series delved into the depths of human nature in a world shattered by a catastrophic earthquake. Violence Jack showcased Nagai's willingness to confront mature themes, explicit violence, and the harsh realities of survival in a society stripped of civilization. The enigmatic titular character navigated a brutal and unforgiving landscape, marking a stark departure in both style and substance from Nagai's earlier, more fantastical works, and highlighting his ability to adapt to the changing tastes of his audience, while pushing the boundaries of storytelling in the manga medium. Cutie Honey, introduced in 1973, marked Nagai's influential foray into the world of magical girls. The series broke new ground by featuring a strong and independent, although somewhat sexualized, female protagonist, a departure from traditional gender roles in manga. Nagai's fearless approach to character development and storytelling continued to resonate with audiences, further solidifying his status as a cultural icon. Dororon Enmakun, first serialized in 1973, seamlessly blended comedy, horror, and the supernatural. Following Enma, the young prince of hell, the series combined slapstick humor with moments of eerie horror, demonstrating the guy's ability to balance contrasting elements, creating a narrative that not only entertains, but also delves into themes of redemption and the consequences of one's actions. Getter Robo, introduced in 1974, exemplified Nagai's prowess in the mecha genre. The series, co-created with Ken Ishikawa, featured colossal robots battling existential threats and laid the foundation for future mecha narratives. Nagai's innovative storytelling techniques, coupled with dynamic and impactful art, set Getter Robo apart as a defining work in the genre. In addition to reshaping the manga landscape with his groundbreaking works, Gonagai's creative vision extended into the realm of anime adaptations. The impact of his manga series transcended the printed page, finding expression on the animated screen, where his narratives came to life with vibrant visuals and dynamic storytelling. Iconic series such as Mazinger Z, Devilman, Cutie Honey, and Getter Robo made the leap from manga to anime, captivating audiences with their imaginative worlds and compelling characters. Nagai's ability to seamlessly transition his narratives across different mediums showcased his versatility as a storyteller. These anime adaptations not only brought his creations to a wider audience, but also contributed to the cultural phenomenon surrounding Nagai's work, solidifying his legacy not just within the manga industry, but also in the broader landscape of Japanese pop culture. I'm never completely satisfied by the quality of my work. I always think it could be improved. On the other hand, animation technologies have continuous evolution, so I'm curious about how my characters could become and what they could do. As the mid to late 1970s dawned, Nagai continued to diversify his creative pursuits. His further collaboration with Ken Ishikawa gave rise to UFO robot Grand Desire. In 1975, expanding the mecha genre with the introduction of an alien protagonist, Duke Fleed, 
This series showcased Nagai's ability to reimagine familiar concepts, infusing them with new dynamics to captivate audiences. Kuro no Shishi, or Black Lion, is another late 1970s manga created by Go Nagai. Set against the backdrop of Japan's tumultuous Warring States period during the 16th century, the story follows the adventures of Jiro, a skilled and defiant ninja engaged in battles against a seemingly immortal samurai. Nagai's storytelling prowess shines through in this historical drama as he masterfully weaves together elements of action, suspense, and feudal Japanese intrigue. Black Lion stands out not only for its dynamic depiction of ninja samurai conflicts, but also for its ability to transport readers and viewers into a vivid and tumultuous period in Japanese history. The series showcases Nagai's ability to seamlessly navigate different genres, further solidifying his legacy in the diverse landscape of manga and anime storytelling. Amidst his continued success, Nagai faced scrutiny for the mature themes present in his works. The explicit content and challenging subject matters in series like Devilman and Violence Jack sparked debates about the appropriateness of such content in manga. Nevertheless, Nagai remained steadfast in his commitment to pushing artistic boundaries and exploring the depths of human nature. I was particularly saddened to find out that in many countries I was considered to be an author who loves to depict battles and destruction just for the fun of it. The reason why I depict the effects of war in my comics is because I strongly believe that a person should learn from childhood how war can be destructive and how much people and societies may suffer from it, just the same way I learned it from the stories of adults around me when I was a little child. If you raise a child telling him only nice and happy things of life, you will be unable to cope with all the hardships he will inevitably meet in his adulthood. If he doesn't know the devastating effects of violence and repression, he could cause incredible damage and suffering to the people around him. In 1976, Gonagai ventured into the world of live-action television with the creation of Aztec Kaiser and Battlehawk, two live-action tokusatsu action battle series that brought his bizarre characters to life. This transition from the page to the screen demonstrated Nagai's adaptability and his willingness to embrace emerging mediums. The 1980s also marked the introduction of Kekko Kamen, a manga that blended satire, action, and elements of the magical girl genre. This series, known for its bold and satirical take on traditional superhero tropes, showcased Nagai's ability to inject social commentary into his works while maintaining an entertaining and dynamic narrative. As the decade progressed, Go Nagai's influence extended globally, with his works gaining recognition in international markets, the themes of his stories, ranging from mecha battles to existential explorations, resonated with audiences worldwide, contributing to the globalization of manga and anime culture. The 1990s saw a resurgence of interest in Nagai's earlier works, with a new generation of readers discovering the timeless appeal of series like Devilman and Mazinger Z. The reissuing of this classic manga, coupled with the release of updated anime adaptations, brought Nagai's creations to a new audience, reaffirming their relevance and enduring popularity. Amidst the global recognition of his works, Go Nagai continued to explore new frontiers in manga and entertainment. The 1990s marked a period of reflection and experimentation for the prolific mangaka. Nagai revisited some of his iconic series, offering fresh perspectives and alternative takes on familiar narratives. Nagai's Devilman franchise continued to evolve. The Devilman Lady manga, serialized from 1997 to 2000, took a different approach by exploring the story from a female perspective. This gender-bending narrative delved into themes of identity, societal expectations, and the consequences of power. Nagai's ability to reinvent his own creations and explore new dimensions within established universes showcased his versatility as a storyteller. Comics are much more enjoyable than novels so they can have a more direct role with the readers thanks to the mixing between images and text. They also came through an incredible evolution in these years, and I do not know how far it can go. Thanks to the new visual technologies, comics will surely evolve into something important, and will keep leading the role anyway. In 1999, Nagai took a bold step by launching Amon, The Dark Side of Devilman. This manga series provided an alternate retelling of the Devilman saga, illustrated by Yu Kinutani, and placing a spotlight on the character Amon, the demon within Akira Fudo. The narrative delves deeper into the dark and chaotic world of demons, showcasing Nagai's penchant for intricate mythologies and complex character exploration. Go Nagai's creative legacy continued to thrive into the 2000s with a series of compelling anime and manga works that showcased his enduring influence on the industry. Shin Getter Robo, New Getter Robo, marked a modern reimagining of the iconic mecha series, introducing new elements and narratives while preserving the spirit of the original. The dynamic storytelling and updated visuals demonstrated Nagai's commitment to evolving his classic creations to resonate with contemporary audiences. 
Devilman Saga, beginning in 2014, continued the legacy of the Devilman series, delving into new dimensions of horror and existential exploration. Nagai's willingness to both continue and reinvent his own creations, returning to the role of both writer and illustrator to explore darker, complex themes, showcased his versatility as a storyteller. The series captivated audiences with its thought-provoking narrative and intricate character development, as well as an updated art style which balanced Nagai's classic style with his new improved skills. Devilman vs. Getter Robo brought together two of Nagai's iconic creations in an explosive crossover. This collaboration not only thrilled fans, but also showcased Nagai's willingness to experiment with narrative boundaries, highlighting his creative fearlessness. This period also witnessed numerous spin-off creations of various Go Nagai franchises, which saw little actual involvement of their original creator, like QT Honey Agogo, Getter Robo Devolution, Mazinger Z, and Mazinger Z The Impact. Although not directly worked on by Go Nagai either in writing or illustration, these works nonetheless contributed to the continued relevance of Go Nagai and his prior creations, with a great deal of effort being put into improving upon and modernizing Nagai's works that inspired these spin-offs by their respective creators. These anime and manga creations from the 2000s underscore Go Nagai's continued relevance and creativity, solidifying his status as a visionary whose impact transcends generations in the ever-evolving landscape of manga and anime. The turn of the late 2010s witnessed a resurgence of interest in Nagai's classic works. Devilman experienced a new lease of life with the release of Devilman Crybaby in 2018, a Netflix animated series that reimagined the iconic story for a contemporary audience. The series, which received critical acclaim, showcased Nagai's enduring relevance and the timeless appeal of his narratives. Devilman is a work that I made 45 years ago from now. There is no net, there is no smartphone, I cannot imagine the present era that has become an internet society like this and criticism and fire-blowing exist only on the net. Beyond that, there is a possibility that a tough, dangerous world will be waiting. I also thought that director Yausa properly painted such a place and that the direction which I wanted to do with Devilman has made me understand well that I can pass it even in modern times. As Nagai entered his later years, his influence continued to ripple through the industry. He remained an active presence, occasionally contributing to special projects and collaborating with fellow creators. His impact on the cultural landscape extended beyond entertainment, with academic institutions recognizing the significance of his contributions to the evolution of manga and anime as an art form. The Neon Genesis Evangelion anime series by Hideaki Anno drew inspiration from Gonagai's works, particularly Shin Geto Robo and Mazinger Z. The influence is evident in the mecha designs as well as the deconstruction of traditional giant robot anime tropes. Anno's willingness to explore psychological and philosophical themes aligns with Nagai's legacy. Kintaro Mira, the mangaka behind Berserk, openly acknowledged the influence of Gonagai in his work. The themes of existentialism, the blurred lines between good and evil, and the exploration of dark, psychological realms in Devilman laid the foundation for the morally complex narrative in Berserk. Mira's creation shares thematic resonance with Nagai's masterpiece, especially in its portrayal of the human condition. Goren Langan also pays homage to Go Nagai's mecha legacy, drawing inspiration from his iconic Super Robot series. The over-the-top action, larger-than-life robots, and a narrative that embraces audaciousness mirror the spirit of Nagai's influential contributions to the mecha genre. Countless parallels can also be seen between Nagai's iconic Magical Girl series, Cutie Honey, and works like Sailor Moon that likely took influence from his female-centered action storytelling and the mix of a school setting. As the manga world continued to evolve, Gonagai's legacy stood as a towering testament to the transformative power of creativity. His willingness to confront societal taboos, explore the depths of human nature, and embrace new storytelling mediums solidified his status as a visionary whose impact transcended generations. Gonagai's journey from the post-war reconstruction era to the digital age mirrored the dynamic evolution of manga itself, a testament to the enduring power of storytelling in shaping cultural landscapes. In conclusion, Gonagai's journey through the landscape of manga and anime is nothing short of legendary. From his formative years influenced by post-war Japan, to his groundbreaking contributions that redefined genres, Nagai's impact has been profound and enduring. His ability to seamlessly blend traditional influences with contemporary storytelling, as well as his fearlessness in tackling taboo subjects, has left an immense and timeless impact on the medium.